What is cash flow? Cash flow forecasting and how to answer cash flow calculation questions in IGCSE for Cambridge International Business Studies. Cash flow and cash flow forecasting can seem really complicated and confusing. There's lots of numbers and columns, there's money coming in, cash going out, what is a payment, what is a trade receivable and so on. But once you understand how it works, it's straightforward and logical. Most importantly, we are only going to focus on what is essential to get you top marks in Cambridge International Business Studies. This is the first part of the tutorial on cash flow. The next section on how to improve cash flow and longer essay questions is available in the IGCSE online course, where you can find everything you need to know and every type of question on cash flow, finance, and indeed the whole IGCSE business study syllabus. You can check out the trial course for free now. But let's start with cash flow. Nearly everyone will be aware of the importance for a business of making a profit and have a basic idea of how profit is calculated. You take away your costs from sales. However, cash flow can be just as crucial for business people as cash is the lifeblood of a business. Without enough cash, the business won't survive. So it's essential as students of business that we get to grips with cash flow. You need to know why cash flow is important be able to interpret a cash flow forecast and recommend ways of improving cash flow. Cash flow questions can be simple calculations to find the value of X and Y in a cash flow forecast or longer questions where students must look at case study data and recommend ways of improving cash flow. What is cash? Well, it's money we can use right away to pay bills or debts that the business may have. It may not be physical cash. Most transactions are online these days, but it has to be in a business bank account and available if needed. For more on the difference between profit and cash, go to 5.3 and income statement. Day to day, a business will have cash coming in. Cash for inflow is when cash comes into the business, like when the business receives payment from sales or receives money from a bank loan. Cash outflow is when cash goes out of the business and occurs when a business has to pay bills like suppliers, rent, workers' salaries, or repay a bank loan. If the cash outflows all happen before the cash inflows, the business will have cash flow problems. If the business can't pay its workers, they will stop working. And if they can't pay their suppliers, production will stop. This will eventually force the business to stop operating and it will close. This is often referred to as bankruptcy or insolvency. To avoid this catastrophe, the business has to ensure there's enough cash at all times so they can pay their bills. Liquidity is the term used to describe cash flow. If a business is liquid, it can pay its short-term debts. To help manage cash flow, businesses may use a cash flow forecast. Managers can look into the future and see if they have enough cash to pay all their short-term debts. It's essential to learn all the different types of cash inflow and cash outflow. This is really going to help when understanding the cash flow forecast. The most common mistakes are when students confuse different types of cash inflow and cash outflow. Cash flow forecast can look complicated. There's lots of numbers and columns, but once you understand how it works, it's straightforward and logical. I've used the cash flow forecast model that's used in Cambridge IGCSE exams, so you know exactly what you're going to be dealing with. At the top, we've got cash inflow, usually from sales, in this case, $200. Then we have to calculate the cash outflow. We do this by adding up all the cash outflows, in this case, raw materials and the rent of the shop. This gives us a total of $150. We then subtract the cash outflows from the inflows and this gives us the net cash flow of $50. Final step is to add the net cash flow to the cash that was already in the business or opening balance. 
This then gives us the closing balance of $150. The closing balance for one month becomes the opening balance for the next. So the closing balance of $150 in June becomes the opening balance in July. The closing balance that we get for July becomes the opening balance for August and so on. So now let's work through July and August using the same calculations. You will usually have at least two short calculation questions on paper one. You only have two minutes for calculating the values of x and y. You won't get any marks for showing you're working out in this question as it's just one mark for each correct calculation. To calculate x, the closing balance, we add the net cash flow and the opening balance. In this case, negative 230 and zero. So the answer is negative 230. Net cash flow is calculated by subtracting cash outflow from cash inflow. As $150 comes into Abdul's business but $170 goes out, the net cash flow is negative 20. Don't forget to add the brackets or a minus sign in your answers. If you've enjoyed the video, show you care, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment or subscribe for the weekly videos to drive you to success in business, IGCSE and A-level. If you want to find out what the difference between profit and cash is, click up here. And if you want to avoid the top five mistakes at IGCSE, click over here. And if you really want to take your learning to the next level, check out the interactive courses and resources to take you to the top in Cambridge Business.